Callbacks are central to asynchronous coding in JavaScript. In this tutorial, we will examine callbacks in depth. If you haven't used callbacks, then most of the coding you have done in JavaScript is executed all at once, sequentially, as the program runs. This is synchronous. However, there are many times when it is beneficial to have code execute after something else has happened not sequential. We call this asynchronous. Callbacks allow us to achieve this and it is necessary to solve many programming problems. Now a callback is simply a function that is invoked or called after something else happens. So whether or not the function runs depends entirely on something else happening, not simply the running of the program. This is achieved in JavaScript by passing a function into another function. And then the function that we passed in is called back, executed, after something else has occurred. This is possible because JavaScript supports higher order functions. If you need to review the concept of higher order functions, I will include a link in the description for this video. Let's look at a couple examples to see how this works. In the first example, we're going to look at a function that is called after a certain amount of time. Set timeout allows us to do that. So first I'm going to set up a function. And all this function is going to do is just log to the console. We'll keep it simple. So we have our function, and then as I said, set timeout is a function in JavaScript that allows us to execute something after a certain length of time, and it uses a callback. So here's how it works. Set timeout, and then we pass in the callback. So in this case, I'm passing in the function that I created, and then we indicate how long it is to wait. And I'm going to say three seconds. So that's basically all there is to it. This here is the callback. This function will not execute until after something else has happened. And that something else is three seconds. So let me save that. Let me open the console and then refresh this page and we'll go ahead and take a look at it. So there I've refreshed the page. Three seconds later, we get the console log statement. So after three seconds, it called back this function. Now in this example, I define the function here before passing it into the set timeout function down here. In JavaScript, you can define the function at the time you pass it to the function. This is called an anonymous function and it is really the standard way of doing this type of thing in JavaScript. So let me show you that. So instead of passing a function that's already been defined, I simply define it at the time I pass it in, like this. I'm gonna do the same thing, have the text just a little bit different. So right here, is the function definition. And it's an anonymous function. And it's not assigned to a variable. It's simply a function expression that's in included as we are calling the set timeout function. And then we still have the other parameter, which indicates three seconds. This is a time expressed in milliseconds. So 3000 would be three seconds. So let me go ahead and remove this. And we'll try this again. Save it come out and refresh. After three seconds, we get the function was called back. So there's our first example of a callback, where a function is passed into another function, then after something happens, that function is called, invoked. Now, a very common application of callbacks in JavaScript are event listeners. You don't want something to happen until an event occurs. For example, clicking on a button. So you pass a function 
to an event listener. When that event occurs, it calls back the function. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to use this HTML page here, which has a button as a part of it. And let me go ahead and delete this. And now let me grab the button first. So I'm going to use query selector to grab that button. And I will simply pass in the ID. Now we have the button, we can set up the event listener. And the event that we want this to fire for is click. And so we indicate the event. Now here is where we pass in the callback. Once again, I'm going to define the function right here. Now I am entering a parameter E in case I want to do something with the event object. I won't in this example. But that's usually what I would do if I were creating an event listener. And we'll just have it logged to the console and message. Simple as that. So the callback is right here. And that function gets called back whenever a click event happens on this button. So that is a callback. Let me go ahead and save that. I'm going to copy file path for this HTML file. So we can take a look at that. Here's the button. If I click it, the button was clicked. So when I click it, the function is called invoked and we get the message. All right, now sometimes you may choose to create your own callback. So, so far we've been using some functions available in JavaScript that accept callbacks as a parameter. Well, you may want to create a function that's like that as well. Let's look at an example. I'm going to copy and paste something in here. Let me describe it. So I have an array set up here, and this array consists of multiple objects. Basically, each object has a name, a score, and a school. So let me give you the for instance for this example that I'm going to do. Let's say we have a lot of data and the data spans more than one school. It's data about students and basically it, for our simple scenario here, it has a name and a score. Now I'm only ever concerned about one of those schools and that happens to be East. Okay, so that's the school I'm concerned about. I never want to deal with any of the other data. And so since I'm constantly doing stuff with the data that is provided with the student's array, I've created myself a little function. And here's the function, process students. Now what this function does is it cycles through the array and simply checks to see if the school is east. So we simply look at the data, the school attribute, we convert it to lowercase, and then we check to see if it's equal to east. If it's equal to east, then I've decided, well, I want to do something with it. Now what is it that I do with that data? Well, I want this function to be reusable. I want to be able to use it a lot. And so if I hard coded what I wanted to do with it, I would use it in one case, wouldn't be able to use it in another case. And so what I decided to do instead is set it up so I could pass a callback, a callback function into it. And then right here, I check to see if that callback is a function using type of. I want to make sure it's a function before I try to call it or invoke it. Then right here is where I invoke it and I pass in the data whatever data I'm working on. So it will only pass in those that have a school of east. It won't pass in anything that's west. So this is a function I've created that uses a callback. Yes, it's a simple scenario, but what it does is it illustrates how you may want to create functions that use callbacks on your own. Now let's go ahead and see how we could use this. So first example. Let's say I want to 
process the student. So I'm going to pass in the student's array. And here's where I'm going to pass in my callback function. And what I want to do with it is I simply want to print to the console. I'm going to keep it simple. I want to print to the console whether the student passed or not. So here's my function. I use a parameter obj because notice the callback has the data passed in and so I have to be able to grab that. And what am I going to do with that? I'm simply going to check to see if obj.score is greater than 60. If it's greater than 60, then I'm going to consider that they passed. Now, if I wanted to do a different number than 60 at some point, obviously I could. And I wouldn't have to change this function at all. Simply the function I pass in would be different. So let me finish this off. obj name passed. All right, so that's my first example. Let's go ahead and see how that works. I'm going to save that, refresh it. Here we get Mary passed, James passed, Rachel passed, and Lynette passed. Now if we jump back and take a look at the data, Mary is with East, James is with East, they're both above 60. Steve is with East, but he wasn't shown because he's below 60, 60 or below. Gabe is with West, Rachel is with East, and she's above 60. Rochelle is with West, Lynette is with East and above 60 as well. And so those are the four that it printed out. Now to show how flexible this can be, let me do one more thing. I'm gonna set up a function that's going to compute the total of all the scores together for East and also a count, so how many students are in, are in East. I could then use that number to figure out an average or other things. But that's, that's what I'm planning to do. So I'm gonna create a second function. I'm gonna call it determine total. Now I'm going to set up a couple of variables first. First variable is for the total. And then I'm going to set up a count variable as well and initialize those to zero. Let me scroll this up so it's a little bit easier to see. All right, now I have those two set up. I'm going to call process students. And once again, I'm gonna pass in the students array. And here is the function. This is my callback function. And now I'm going to do something different. I still use the parameter obj so I can accept what is passed in, the object that is passed in. But here's what I'm going to do. Total equals total plus obj.score. Now this will automatically get all of the East students because process students is already doing that for me. And then I simply count to increment my count. All right, just so we can see what we get, let me log to the console at the end of this function. Total score will log out total, and then we'll also log out count. So there's a log statement. All right, so I have my function set up. Now, just going to call it down here so we can see what we get. Let me go ahead and save that. Refresh. We get the same names from the other one, but now notice we get total score 390 and total count five. So if we jump back to the data, one, two, three, four, five. There are five in East. And if you add those up, that does equal the total we receive, which is 390. So just an example of creating your own function that uses a callback. Now we also did something interesting in this determine total function here. I use closure so that I could keep track of a total and keep track of a count without creating a global variable. 
if you're interested in learning more about those concepts, I'll also leave a link to tutorials for those concepts in the description section of this video. Now, if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. And if you'd like to continue learning, here are some suggestions. First, you can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, click the circle link on the left. I release a new tutorial each week. And if you are ready to dive into a full course, click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.